Let's talk to Scott Geekus. He's at the edge of the trading floor in Chicago, and he joins us now to talk more about all of these numbers here. A um, couple of questions. First of all, Scott, is the market really starting to hone in on this report that's going to be released on Friday, or are they still yeah. concerned about the, the delays in planning or both? Uh, I think it's both. This is the first time in a very long time that the weather and the planting is taking center stage over the trade war talks. So this Friday report is very significant. Uh, that is definitely confirmed by the higher volatility. Just in soybeans alone, you're looking at a 20 percent or a 20 cent move is expect, expect, expected with uh, after the report. So that's a very significant type of move. Uh, definitely t with the big, large, short positions just across the board, soybeans, corn, as well as wheat, the skew is definitely to the upside. You're going to pay a little bit more premium for the calls rather than downside puts. So we're going to definitely keep an eye on the open interest. One thing I want to point out in the corn market is the 380 line has about 50,000 of open interest between the calls and the puts. So usually what that means is it tends to gravitate towards that strike around expiration. So we have quite a little bit of time left in that those options, but Friday's report is definitely going to be a big determination of where the markets are going to move. That's a very, very good point. Uh, on when we're talking about reports, the grain export inspections were out this morning. Is the market reacting to any of these numbers? I think the center, the center stage is just main, mainly focused on the weather, uh, flooding, as well as all the conditions. It's a little bit supportive. That's why you're seeing a little bit bump up, but it's very light volume, so we're going to wait for that Friday report. All right. Scott Geekus with Wall Trading is here with us, and we're going to continue our conversation with him right after this break. We'll talk livestock next. We had a cold storage report and a cattle on feed report that was out on Friday. We're going to ask Scott Geekus about uh, what he thinks about those reports and how the market's reacting to those. First of all, though, let's get to the futures here. We'll stop over in the live cattle first. April down 145 at 128.28. June down 155 at 121.95. And the August down $1.43. April feeder cattle are down 90 at 147.90. May feeders down 105 at 153. Got as high as 153.80. August down a dollar even at 158.32. Lean hog complex here today with the April up 30 at 78.63. But that's the only contract that's higher. May down 48. June down 22. Now July is unchanged after being lower earlier in the day. It's trading at 98.58. Scott, what do you think of all of these numbers over here? We'll start in the cattle market first. Uh, do you think that this is, is overreaction or about what we would expect after the cattle on feed report? Uh, I actually, I think it's uh, uh, behaving a little bit better than expected. So the cattle on re feed report came in well above the expected range on the higher end, which it was the reason for a little bit of a pullback. Now, right before that report came out, as I was talking on Friday, there was a build on the 128 puts. So we're going to see how this is really going to play out. This break of 129 is a little bit supportive of those 128 puts, but we got to wait and see. You know, the trend has been just by the dips. So with the demand is this is the type of the cycle with cattle where the demand is expected to pull up, pull back a little bit but i don't think it's pulled back as much as as expected so it's holding in there pretty strong relative to the report that came out is this a correction we have going on would you call it a correction over here in the hog complex uh the, i i think it's the same thing uh just you know, traders are buying dips. Uh, that's very much expected. You know, there's reports and analysts claiming, you know, we could see, uh, you know, 90s, 102. One of the last couple of uh, imports they've had, even they've been importing U.S. pork, even with the tariffs. So, again, it's still they need it. It's not a want. It's just a matter of how much are they actually going to buy. Do you, because they are still importing pork, even though those tariffs are in place, uh, what do you think? Is that an indication maybe that uh, their African swine favor was a little bit bigger deal than what was originally thought? Uh, I definitely think that's the case. So you got to remember when the African swine fever first hit, they said that if it affected 10% of the pork in China, that it was equivalent to all of the U.S. exported pork that uh, for 2018. Well, those numbers are already hitting well above over th that 20% mark. So that's a significant number. So we expect that to keep playing a bigger factor instead of in the price and to the upside. Scott Geekus here with us, Wall Trading. Scott, thank you very much. Hope you have a great afternoon.